Again, Happy Lent, brothers. This is Father Mark uh, welcoming you into a conversation from our Lunch and Learn. This is part two of what we talked about on Thursday, March the 14th. It was our first Lunch and Learn, as I said in the first video. It was a great meeting, very much appreciated our conversation. And uh, our conversation was so extended that the second part of the meeting was much more efficient and to the point. And, and this second video is going to help you um, consider some things about onboarding your parish and your staff. I want to recap very quickly where we were in part one, which is what our pastor is doing now, which was uh, a lot of what we talked about in that first part of the Lunch and Learn. So what our pastor is doing now summarizing that first video again that first video is for you on our priest section of the website we uh, said first things first we want to do uh, some really important things which is make sure that all those goals are submitted and that you know what your priorities are again if this is the first video you're watching and the word priority catches you by surprise that's just a, a way that we're extrapolating that from the goals to make it easier for you to communicate with your parish so don't freak out about that we can help you with that what we're going to do on our end is take the best of the best of all the action plans the ways that we're meeting those goals and we're going to submit that to you so that you have something to choose and to look at as you develop your own action plans but we would want to have all that in place by Easter and again in the first video we summarized all that and we said that you can call Joe and Kristen. Uh, Kristen is there to help you. Joe's there to help you uh, if you have any questions about that. In the first video, we said that the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And so we asked ourselves, what is the most important thing for us right now? Three things. Number one, moving well versus feeling rushed. Don't you want you to feel rushed? Just know that we need to be uh, leading with intentionality right now, Le leading intentionally rather than just grasping at getting something started in a parish. And if for a lot of us, that means doing what we need to do rather than doing what we want to do. Uh, there's a, a lot that needs to happen before we launch things in the parish. We're here to help you with that. And uh, those three things included getting the staff on board, getting key leadership on board, and getting the parish on board. Now, in the first video, we zeroed in on getting the leadership on board. In this video, we're going to talk about getting the staff and the parish on board. But in regards to getting the key leadership on board, we also reminded you in that first video that later on we'll talk about the pastoral council and finance council and other key leadership. But but in that first video, when we talked about key leadership now, we were specifically talking about your implementation team, your DRE, and your adult formation team. Walked you through all the details of that in that first video, landing in our goals to have the implementation team reorganized by Divine Mercy Sunday, having your DRE conversation has to have started before Holy Week, and the adult formation team uh, as we're working with you with your DRE, we can assist you in developing a timeline for adult formation teams. All that's in the first video. If you haven't seen it, make sure that you have time to listen to it or to watch it, and we are here to help you. So, part one, we talked about what a pastor is doing now. Uh, part two, uh, in this video, we want to uh, talk about how you can onboard your parish and your staff. That's going to be an essential part of the process. And as we have uh, reached out to folks who have been helping us, we have learned that there are five things essential to healthy change. You may recognize some of this from your own experience of what you either have or haven't done when it comes to change but number one people have to know why we're changing whenever we understand the why behind the what it's a lot easier for us to change the what right it's a lot easier for us to know what we're uh, the thing the new things that we're going to do once we understand why we need to do them Number two, we have to know how we're changing. The exact nature of where we're going has to be clear to us. People have to be included or heard as a part of the process. Number four, change has to lead to an objective improvement. In other words, whatever we change has to make things better, and that can't be subjective. That needs to be objectively measurable. And then five, uh, the process of implementing the change has to go smoothly. So those five things, if we're going to do things in the parish, change things in the parish, people have to know why we're doing what we're doing, how we're going to do it. They have to be included in, with their opinions and their insights, and the change has to lead to objective improvement, and the process has to be executed well. That means the parish right now, Right now, your parish has to know why we're changing things, how we're changing things, and they have to be included in the process. And your staff has to know why we're changing things, how we're changing things, and they have to be included in the process. The last two, we feel really confident about. In other words, when you look at what we're changing in parish life, all the best practice research that we've done, which is the heart of what you're doing in your strategic plan in your parish, leads us to believe that you're going to be putting some better things in place. 
uh, changes to adult formation, changes to youth formation, changes to Sunday or to outreach. We believe that this best practice research shows us that that's going to lead to an objective improvement. We feel confident in that. And the reason we're having the lunch and learns in these videos is to help you execute well, right? We want to help you in the process. So that means the first three things are the subject of our conversation in this video, which was what we talked about at the lunch and learn, right? How do we help people know why we're changing, how we're changing, and how do we include them in the process? So people have to know why we're changing. We're suggesting that you use Divine Renovation by James Mallon as the platform to communicate change in your parish. It's a great book, and uh, it's gonna, really going to tell the story from the lens of a pastor, which I think is different than only looking at things either through the lens of a theologian or as a layperson in a pew. Um, how? Well, we're suggesting that you start with your staff. Read the book as a staff and then read it as a parish. But if you're if your staff is already on board with you and, and they are your allies, then it's going to be easier for you to unpack that with your parish. Start with one chapter a week and unpack it at a staff meeting. Uh, so give everybody a heads up that, hey, next week we're going to be unpacking chapter one. Tell everybody you expect them to have read chapter one by that staff meeting. Hold them accountable to it. Have some questions uh, that, that came from your heart as you read it, like what stood out to you, what questions do you have. Have everybody answer those questions and unpack it at a, at a staff. I want to give you a heads up, though, uh, that you have to read the book before they read it, right? And you may want to be on guard that Chapter 5 is over 100 pages. So if you were going to do it as a staff, here's what we are suggesting that you consider. Um, the, the invitation here with this example template, just know that this is an example because you may or may not be able to start in the second week of Lent. But the hope is that you are able to wrap up Chapter 4 before you break for Easter. A lot of us, once we hit Holy Week, are going to move into a different mode of thinking, of course, and a lot of us are going to vacation after Easter. That's going to give your staff some time to digest all of Chapter 5. So if you return to uh, Divine Renovation in the second week of Easter, notice that big gap between, in this example, the fifth week of Lent and the second week of Easter that gives them lots of time to digest Chapter 1. Uh, chapter 5. And then we're, of course, recommending that you have two conversations at a staff meeting because of the breadth and, and depth and length of the chapter uh, unpacked it over two meetings. And then, of course, you would wrap it up uh, with chapter 7, which in this example uh, lands you, of course, before Pentecost in the fifth week of Easter. But even if you started in, in the middle of Lent with your staff, you'd still be able to, I think, uh, get chapter 4 done prior to Easter and land the plane with the book prior to Pentecost. Now, after you've done that with your staff, then you read it as a parish. And the way that we're recommending you consider doing that is consider having the books available on Easter Sunday and Divine Mercy Sunday. And then you can, you can follow along from May 5th all the way through Trinity Sunday on June 16th. You would unpack one chapter per week with your parishioners. Now, if you're asking questions about how to sell the books, how much to sell the books for, where to get the books, all that is in a video that's on the website in the pre-section. Um, I'm not going to uh, uh, list all those details for you now so you can hear a more efficient uh, presentation today. But if you want a clear, exact details of what to do in the assertion of the book, that's all in a video there. Uh, however, we are recommending that you read that with your parish during the Easter season. Uh, again, you might, uh, for example, on Sunday, May 5th, if that's what you choose to do, whenever you do your announcements, whether you do them before Mass or at the end of Mass or after Mass, whenever you do them, you might ask the parishioners to give you 60 seconds, and you might outline a couple of key quotes that stood out to you. Now, to make that easy on you, because reading quotes at length in a parish is going to bore people, uh, I've put some PDFs on the pre-section of the website. As I'm doing at Redeemer, I'm just going to give you the resources that I'm doing over here. And so by the time you get into Easter, all seven of the chapter summaries are going to be available for you online. It's going to be pretty easy for you. So you can just download those PDFs. You can put those in the bulletin. You can have them as handouts. But um, what I'm doing is I'm just taking time just to kind of have the congregation look at those key quotes, and I just kind of summarize it for them in 60 seconds. Uh, some people are going to read the book. Some people won't. The people who don't read the book are not going to necessarily hang with you the whole time, but at least you've given everybody the opportunity to participate in the process. So whenever you're looking at the books, it's just important for you to know that some of those are already available for you. We had a generous donor who was uh, very kind enough to buy a book for every pastor and for their staff. You can call Trudy at 850 31 173. She can give you those books and get those to you uh, uh, during the second week of Lent. 
And um, again, on the website in the pre section, if you have any questions about divine renovation, that video is available for you. If you need books for your parish and you have questions about where to order them for your parish, how to sell them, again, Trudy can tell you what to do. Uh, 173 is her extension at the Pastoral Center. All right, so the first thing we're doing is why we're changing things. There is no better resource than divine renovation. Uh, all the stuff that we've been producing for you is good, but not everyone is going to watch videos. You can put a book in their hand. They can slowly read it, and I think they're going to enjoy it in that regard. Now, the second thing that people have to know is they have to what they have to know not only why we're changing, but how we're changing. So let's talk a little bit about how you can help your, your staff and your parish know how we're changing. Of course, when we talk about how we're changing things, that's your goals. That's the things that you're going to be doing in your parish that is different, right? And the first thing I want to encourage you there is that it's better to win with buy-in than it is with speed. There's going to be a temptation and a lot of priest's heart to get something moving just either because we're tired of the planning process or because you feel like you have to do something. Uh, just know that it's better to have people on board with you long term than it is to splash people with something in the short term. Uh, I think all of us can attest to the fact that it's easier to start things than it is to sustain things. And so it's better to win with buy-in now than to just start something. So with your staff, I would encourage you to take time explaining your priorities and your goals. Uh, you don't want your staff to hear about this um, from the pulpit, right? And I would encourage you to just take one priority per week. Your staff needs to know how you came to, to land with those priorities. If your staff has not seen the feedback from the listening sessions, or if your staff hasn't seen some of the things from your implementation team, you want to make sure your staff sees that. And if you need help with knowing what to bring to your, implement, your uh, staff, maybe someone from the implementation team can assist you as a pastor in knowing what to present to your staff. I would encourage you to just take one priority per week and then explain to them the goals because they're all going to have questions. And you want to have time with your staff, lots of time where they can ask questions, help you connect dots. They're going to see things that you don't see, but you want them to be on board with you. And you want them to understand the why behind the what. Uh, just because people have memorized the, the five words of the formation life cycle or they've uh, heard the language of strategic planning to whatever degree they've heard it, doesn't mean that they really get it. And I think that what I've found in working with key volunteers and staff is that even the people who have heard this a thousand times, they hear it a different way when they act actually start to see implications in their job or in their lifestyle. Don't underestimate the amount of time that you're going to need to tell them why things are changing before you, you tell them what things are going to change. And that's why the book is so important because I think it does a better job than any with helping people understand the why behind the what. Same thing is with, true with your parish. I, I'd actually change, uh, encourage you with the same timeline, right? Take your time in explaining your priorities and your goals. I think that uh, there's a temptation out there to try to do everything at once. And I don't think that that serves people well because I think it comes out of our fear that we're going to bore people. Uh, it, this is exciting because it's going gonna, it's gonna to impact people's lives. So I would encourage you to just do one per week uh, at the end of Mass or in a homily or dedicate some substantial time to helping people understand the significance of the priority and significance of the goals that are going to help with that. Um, give them lots of time for Q&A after Mass if they want to meet with you privately. We'll talk about a town hall meeting in a couple of seconds, but just know that they're going to have questions themselves, and they're going to have to understand the why behind the what also. So uh, that includes reading the book Divine Renovation. You can see that at the top of the slide here. But now you'll see how uh, we're recommending in this timeline, uh, if you would have three priorities, for example, if you would go with formation or Sunday and outreach, um, you might have a whole Sunday where you, you dedicate your homily or some time at the end of Mass talking about the first priority and the goals. Again, the same thing on June 30th and July 7th. Take your time. Slowly unpack things and so that people get it, they understand it. And then uh, you might actually have a town hall meeting at the end of that, which we'll talk about in just a couple of seconds. But you can see in the example how as you're telling people how things are going to change Take your time and resist the temptation to do everything at once. So the first thing is you want people to understand why we're changing, how we're changing, and now people have to be included in the change, right? So with your staff, they can't hear about things for the first time from the pulpit. It's really important that your parishioners um, are, are with you, but it's really important that your staff is with you. 
In addition to that, they can either be your allies with information or they can sow seeds of doubt when they say, I don't know. Um, you don't want that to happen. You don't want people in your parish to, uh, to go to your staff with questions. And then if your staff doesn't know, even if they're, they're, they're uh, doing the best they possibly can with it, then it's going it's gonna, to it's gonna sow seeds of doubt and distrust. So if your staff is with you, they'll be your best allies that are there. And then finally, you're going to have to avail yourself to some of your staff members one-on-one. Some of the people in your team are going to need time with you one-on-one to adjust to what they see in the goals and objectives. Make sure that you are availing yourself to your staff as necessary. And the same thing is with your parish. You want to give your parish opportunities to give you feedback, especially with the book and then with the goals. So you can see in this example that you can have your Q&A regarding divine renovation whenever you want. But in this example, somewhere around June 19th, you might say, we've placed a QA and uh, a as something for you to consider. It's in the middle of the week. It's after they've read the book. It's a good chance for them to be able to show up and ask questions to you and make comments about the book. And then we can't encourage you enough to not promulgate your plan unless you, got, you gave people in your parish time for feedback. Right, so you want to have a town hall meeting, uh, regards to your goals and ob- objectives. You might say your action plans, so that if you need to make any adjustments, you can do that before it goes live. Now, presuming that you would uh, uh, share your first priority on June 23rd and wrap it up on June, uh, July 7th, you might have a town hall meeting after you've done all that to get good feedback from people. And then finally, they want to promulgate your plan with some kind of ceremony in your parish, and so that everybody is coming on board with you. So. Uh, In summary, uh, onboarding your parish and your staff, number one, people have to know why we're changing. We're recommending that you use Divine Renovation as a book. Number two, people have to know how we're changing. We recommend that you dedicate one meeting with your staff per week to talk about those goals and objectives, then one Sunday in the parish per priority, and then finally, uh, give time to your staff so that they can give you feedback, have a Q&A with the book for the parish, and then a town hall meeting where they can give you uh, their response to the goals. Again, if you haven't seen the first video on what are you doing now, I would encourage you to watch that video. Certainly encourage you to join us on next Thursday, uh, Thursday, March 21st. Uh, we're going to go deep into adult formation, unpacking four things with you over lunch. The vision for adult formation, what are adult formation teams, why they're important, small groups, and then we're going to have a case study uh, that's going to help you see it all in a parish. Again, hope you're doing well. Hope you have a great Lent. If you have any questions, buzz me on my cell phone or reach out to me via email. And until we see you at Lunch and Learn, God bless you.